Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show, we're talking about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Blind Spot. Crazy episode. A lot of stuff went down. Obviously, we have this congressman named uh, Justin being killed. He leaves a message, GPA, that's connected to a tattoo. And it turns out that this is basically about lobbyists kind of putting in, you know, buying politicians and stuff like that. I mean, it's kind of like they invest money to kind of get, you know, politicians to kind of vote the way they want to. It's kind of how everything works. But it turns out this is all about China because they're the ones kind of like this is kind of it's kind of one of those things of like, oh, yeah, one government influencing another another country's government influencing another type of, you know, espionage type of thing. And it turns out that whites is at the center of all of this. And I love like that immediately. And I'm curious why amongst anyone rich defends him more so than anyone else. I mean, to be fair, the team kind of has their past with him. So they're kind of not all really that too keen about it. But it's just like, Rich is kind of like, no, this and that saying there's plausible deniability. It's like he said he never talked to Justin, which is true because he only replied with a thumbs up. And we don't know if that even when they met up that they actually talked. And it's this and that. And then I love it's like, oh, Matthew just pulled, pushed all his meetings and his driver's waiting for him. And you have Rich being like, oh, that's, sus that's that's very suspicious. It's like after he spent all that time defending him. But I guess like. And someone who's been on the wrong side of things, I guess as a you know former criminal himself, slash part-time criminal kind of here and there when, you know, the FBI kind of needs him to kind of play that role. I guess for him, he couldn't see it in Matthew to be that type of person. So he's kind of like, no, he's actually a good guy. Which, once again, I bring it up. Matthew's kind of been a douchebag in the past. So like, he's kind of manipulated, especially when it comes to this team. That's even an element that comes up in the episode. It's like, like I'll, I'll get to it soon enough. But I, I, I bring it up yet again. I love White this season. He's so good. They're bringing new flair to his character like never before. Like he has comedic elements to him. He's kind of got like a little bit of a rich dot com vibe to it. Like, like obviously the other directors have kind of like, especially Hertz kind of had her own like oh quirkiness to her, and then it's kind of like, but she was very serious, and it's like White has a serious side, but it also seems like he has a spineless side, but he also has a comedic side. It's like there's a lot of layers to his character that we never got to witness before because all we got was douchebag always trying to find some way to manipulate people to kind of further his own career but now we're kind of seeing different sides of him because uh, he's trying to look out for Frank uh, uh, who is played by Mario Van Peebles which is pretty dope uh, because it's like oh it's him looking out for a friend which is like oh it's hard to believe he actually has friends he seems like the type of person that would just kind of sink people just so he can you know better himself but then at the same time it's like I love it like when it's all said and done there's a lot going on. I, I'm all over the place, so I do apologize. I love it when everyone's kind of figuring everything out. Jane and Kurt walk in and Patterson and Rich are like, okay, we figured it out. Well, we figured something out, too, behind all of this. It's like, you go first. It's like, no, you go first. And Rich is like, no, 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 no. We always go first. You go first. And Jane's like, someone needs to go first. It's like, okay, we believe China's behind this. And they're like, uh, oh. And then, like, Kurt was like, oh, that's what we figured out, too. It's like, yeah, right, sure. And then they point out how they figured it out. It's like, wow, how did we miss that? And, and then Rich is like, oh, don't worry about it, Patterson. Like, you know, you shouldn't blame yourself. And she's like, no, I don't. I blame us for missing this obvious thing in front of us. I thought that was kind of pretty neat. And then also, when it's all said and done, White comes in. He's like, stop what you're doing. And they're like, come on, dude. And Rich is like, I literally have been defending you all day. He's like, wait, wait, what are you talking about? Wait, what are you doing? He's like, actually, we're looking into this whole situation. And he's like, oh, actually, I'm doing the same thing. We're all kind of working on the same case. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys the truth. The fact of the matter is, I think China's behind this. And Jane is like, we already know. And he's like, well, that kind of deflates everything. Because he came in thinking like, boom, boom, boom. I got, you know, I got everything set up. And it's like, oh, yeah, long. So it turns out, nope. Uh, he kind of got shortchanged on that. It's like, I felt so bad for him. He came in there and like, yeah, I, I came in with the the uh, linchpin to figuring all of this out. And it's like, oh, they already figured it out before me. And he's like, I literally drove all the way out there, Westchester, for nothing. I even love it later on because, like, okay, we got to go set up a, uh, uh, um, a protective custody for uh, Frank. And it's like, man, I literally have, I'm having to drive to, to uh, Westchester for a second time today, like twice in a day. I just love that he's complaining about that. It's so good. But you got to admit, even being kind of as goofy and wild as he is, he's actually not completely an idiot because he figured the whole Frank situation out like, oh, I know you're the one actually behind all this because of the Thai situation. Because at first it's like, oh, man, like he did some shady stuff. There's the whole underage thing. I'm like, oh, come on, dude. 
And, you know, even uh, Whites is kind of like, yeah, I know he's kind of done some deplorable things. I don't agree with everything, but because even like Reed is like, that was your mentor. It's like, guy's kind of a scumbag. He's like, you think I agree with everything that he's done? But the fact of the matter is, he's like, I just kept trying to get him talking. But you, you're doing that whole bad cop thing. It's like, come on, keep doing it, though. Like, I was, you know, it's kind of warming up to me a little bit. It's like, you're such a goof. I love it. But it's like, it took one little key detail to tie that. Frank was wearing it and that photo that kind of unraveled everything and made Matthew figure it out. It's like, you're at, and even Frank was like, you're actually too smart for politics and try to put a gun on him until Reed came and knocked him out. And he's like, what was it like? God, that was so close. And Reed's like, I'm sorry, I ran out of bullets and stuff like that. So I love that. Then there's a the whole situation of Matthew apologizing and stuff like that. And he's like, I'm not going to hold it against you guys. I mean, to be fair, it, it kind of sucks a little bit that you guys thought I was part of this conspiracy and everything like that. But he's like, I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to yell. So he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just let it all go. It's like, we are a team. And it's like, yeah, we've had, like, like I was bringing up earlier, it's like, we have had our differences. The fact of the matter is, it's kind of like, what was, I forgot how he exactly put it, but it was basically it's like our history of like, just having the way we have, it's kind of like, oh, it's kind of like, you know, we all kind of have our little history together. So it kind of works out just like, hey, you know, it plays a part in our story as a team, essentially making comparison between them. It's like he made comparisons between himself and LeBron because it's like, you know, me, us working together. It's like LeBron and the Lakers. LeBron was dunking all over the Lakers. But now they've come together and now they're going to do great things together. And I went, whoa, 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 who's LeBron in the situation? He's like, whoa, whoa, why are you looking like that? It's like, I'm LeBron. Like, why? Who, if, if not me, who's LeBron? It's like, no, Patterson's LeBron. He's like, what? Pat Patterson's good at a job, but I'm LeBron in this situation. I'm like, this, this conversation is happening and it's like no matter what I'm gonna have each other each of you guys backs which is so interesting because that's immediately right before he throws Reed under the bus to that um CIA lady which like obviously going back to it that whole situation I'm like that sucks because it's like I already knew she was gonna throw like she was aiming for Reed the moment she was like oh yeah honesty you know protects us I'm like the moment she said that and the look on her face and everything I was like I was like that moment I was like Reed just got screwed over. She's going to use that against Reed. I mean, all that, like, you're going to blame him for something like that. Someone who's a former teammate, I guess, in, under these circumstances, it's like her doing what she's doing. The fact of the matter is you should have cut ties with her completely. He didn't want anyone to die, especially under that circumstance about her. And so it's kind of like his his judgment, it's clouded when it comes to Tasha. So there's that whole situation. What I think is also interesting is... Reed ended up calling him a snake and calling her a wolf, but it's like, you're a snake because it's just like, because even I was like, man, that sucks. You literally gave that huge speech. I thought you were bringing him him in because in, you're going to tell him the truth. And it's like, no, you fed him to the wolves and everything. And it's like, man, there you are making that big speech and everything. And it sucks. Oh, wait, never mind, because apparently you were doing that for a play because it's like, yeah, we got to take down Zapata because the fact of the matter is if we don't get to her soon, the CIA is going after her. And they said the whole dead or alive situation, which is bad enough, but that's code for no, we want her dead because she's an embarrassment plus of all the other stuff she did, which I'm going to get to soon enough. But that's like, wow, that's nuts, you know? So, and the fact is, this is going to be their little secret thing. Come on, I'm... I did it again. I did it in another recording. I don't know why I said comma. I think I'm used to, because I'm usually, when I'm doing my notes, I'm usually saying that out loud, because I just, you know, uh, voice audio when it comes to my notes. I don't know what, <laughs> ignore me. Uh, once again, early morning recordings always get a little wacky. I do apologize. <laughs> um, essentially... I'm curious, is he going to bring in the rest of the team, or is it just going to be something him and Reed work on? Uh, also, like, oh, yeah, what are we having for dinner? You know, I'm, I am vegetarian. I'm, I am vegan. Not really. And it's just kind of like, I'm loving you more and more this season. You're so good. It is also that thing in retrospect, because it's like, oh, yeah, they went through the trouble. Like, they haven't had the best run of, like, people heading the organization, because... Well, Mayfair had her own issues. Not something we really talk about a lot, but like, yeah, overall, Mayfair was a good person. Then there was Hirsch, who once upon a time, um, she's always kind of been a bad person, apparently. So there's that. But then there's like Whites, who seems like, eh, 
he's kind of started off a dick, but now it's kind of like, hey, you're a fun-loving douchebag, you know, now. So it's like, hey, we can we can forget all about that because we love you now. At least I do. That's how I feel about it. But we'll ultimately have to wait and see where that all goes. It's actually interesting, kind of going back to what I was trying to bring up earlier. It turns out there was validity to the whole, like, oh, yeah, uh, Claudia is actually MI6, not less she quit MI6 to kind of work with Madeline, but it did seem like she was legitimately undercover. So what Tasha found about her was legit, which begs the question, and, like, I don't like it. I can bring that up again. I don't feel like Tasha is able to accomplish all this on her own. She's got to have some, like, government help. So was her and... Claudia working with MI6? Did she go work for British spies? Like, you know, did they kind of draft her unbeknownst to everyone, including the CIA or what? Because remember, there was that person, dude, she was running from that one episode and we never cut back to explain what that was about. I guess maybe that was her doing something for Madeline that episode that just kind of didn't work out, but it's kind of like, oh, never mind, we're moving past that. I don't know. It's just, that was completely overlooked. So, like, not unless that's something that needs deeper explanation. So, it's like, like I said, not unless pod is actually working for, like, MI6 or something. But that, that's why I was kind of like, would they really hire you? I mean, especially because you're a burn spy. I feel like no one would want to touch you. And even if you weren't a burn spy, you were a former CIA. I feel like that put a little, like, asterisk beside you be like mm, we probably won't mess with you that's what i'm kind of thinking so but the fact that she just killed an undercover cop i mean it was meant to save her own you know what's the word i'm looking for cover which begs the question of like did she kind of fake that in some shape or form like it has this whole claudia thing been like something of like oh yeah they have been working together like they have prior knowledge to each other hence why she was able to get Claudia's files like she did or maybe just Tasha just, Tasha all on her own has all these connection and all this power and reach that we just don't know I don't know like I said it just seems a little suspicious she said but to kind of get all this done I feel like Tasha's never really had that much power for, before and now all of a sudden she has it that's why I'm like there's something suspicious going on here it's actually kind of interesting because obviously Madeline is trying to bring down Bradley Dynamics because like they're up for a bid for a defense contract and it's like by bringing down the competition she can bring the business back up which is interesting because essentially she's legitimately trying to run the business she's not even trying to follow like Crawford's whole vision and stuff like that uh, that was his crazy stupid vision sure as hell not mine she just wants to turn a company into a big powerhouse yeah it can do illegal stuff I don't care but it's more so than anything like she's trying to dominate everything so that's what this is all about for her which is so fascinating to me because the company's in a huge amount of debt just because of Crawford left everything that way trying to accomplish all his schemes and stuff like that that one army of the world stuff that she was kind of like you know that crazy talk which is interesting but then we get the whole Tasha uh blackmailing the dude uh his name's Adam interestingly enough played by uh Callum Blue uh I believe the actor's name is yes which I think I've, I've seen him in a few things, but the thing that comes to mind the most when I uh, when I, I best know him as is Zod from Smallville. So I thought that was pretty dope. Specifically Zod in season nine. Yes, just because Zod kind of comes up earlier in the series, but it's a different thing. I'm just, so that's why I'm just that's why I specifically say season nine. That works out. They get information about Arvo. It's connected to a plane. It's like aeronautics is what it's all about and it's like oh so what are we going to do about this oh madeline wants to crash a plane she's like i'm not going to crash it you're going to crash it because apparently tasha's explanation like tasha rushing to help try to cover the whole thing up with blake as well as the other people that madeline killed at the beginning of the season it's like oh yeah let's fake a pl uh, use a plane crash and it's like oh because you gave me that idea now madeline wants to apply that to this as well because it's it's the best way to bring Bradley Dynamics down, so I was like, yay, Tasha, you gave this lady the inspiration to do this situation right now, so a lot of people, like, Tasha's done some stuff here and there that's gotten people hurt, granted, she's never directly hurt anyone under these circumstances, granted, Claudia was, like, the first casualty in that situation, but now she might be involved with kind of mass casualties, and so that turns into a pretty sticky situation for her, so it's kind of like, Okay, so what she's going to do about this? Like, hey, there's probably no easy way around this, but hey, we have the whole Reed and White's situation potentially coming down her, you know, her lane, you know, so maybe they'll get to her in time before she has to do this. Who knows? Like I said, that Madeline woman is very terrifying in the sense of her just being so, like, 
she says it with a smile and everything. I'm like, yeah, you can already tell that lady was not the kind of be messed with because she is very psychotic in a sense. She's very socially, like, kind of a sociopath in a sense. She kind of will get do whatever she wants to to get what she wants. I mean, to be fair, I guess we're, we're not to be too surprised because let's not forget what she did to her husband just because, you know, she just, you know, because she wants the power and position. So hence why she's doing what she's doing with the company and stuff like that. That's the most important thing to her right now. Now, along with all of that, we had the Jane and Kurt situation. Like, Kurt knows Jane's hiding stuff. Jane tried to perform that operation. It was like a dry run, but it's like she doesn't have time to wait for a good, like, you know, device for Violet to get her hands on to help them with the whole uh, breaking Shepard out. But Kurt, it kind of subtly throughout the entire episode is kind of hinting at, oh, yeah, man, secrets are a terrible thing. And Jane's kind of like, like nosy nose, so she's kind of like, Seek, maybe people have secrets for a reason. Now, what's interesting is, like, obviously, you know, when they were looking after the councilwoman this episode, they go to the same hospital that Kurt's dad was in. And so she was like, do you ever wonder about the truth? Once again, how the hell did, like, that's what I'm so curious about. They never explained it, and I guess they're kind of okay. I guess they're kind of like, we don't really need to explain it. Just, she figured it out somehow. Context clues. Maybe there's whole files on Jane. But it's like, how do you know what you know? You knew about the Keaton situation. You know about this. That's also another thing I really want to point out, too, that I think was kind of interesting. The CIA lady is kind of like, oh, yeah, I'm basically replacing Keaton in this regard. I work with the current director of the CIA. Um, for whatever reason, I thought Keaton was. I thought he was the CIA. Maybe he was, but whoever it is. No. I thought he was the director. Maybe he stepped down at some point, or maybe because of his condition in it, well, him being on, you know, in an induced coma, and, you know, someone else was immediately brought up. But it made it seem like that director was in the way, like, in the pay, like that path for a while. Did Keaton get knocked down a peg or two, like, position wise or whatever? Because I could have sworn he was the director, like, after Carter, but. Maybe position change. Maybe they pointed it out. I'm just not remembering. But nevertheless, her being like, oh, yeah, Keaton's kind of got a soft spot for this team. He's got infinity for this team, which is like, which is interesting because the same thing applies to Whites and Keaton. They were both adversaries to this team, but then slowly but surely, yeah, they still had their issues. Even Keaton did. But he worked with this team a lot more than you kind of expect him to, especially because in the beginning, like, Kurt was super pissed when he found out about what Keaton had done to Jane under those circumstances and kind of held it against him. So there's that whole situation. So, but he became more of an ally than a, he kind of became more of a friend to me, but he was still more of an ally, just like white. So it's just kind of interesting. Those dynamics kind of laying like that in comparison with the team, but getting back to it, it's a whole conversation of if you could go back and uh, like uh, not know the truth about your dad, would you like that? And Kurt was like, no, he would always prefer the truth, no matter how painful it is, because the truth is like, What's the truth? Because, and it's like, you know, she's kind of like, well, what about all the good times and stuff like that? For Kurt, he doesn't outright say this, but it's just because, well, it was all lies. Because these were good memories, moments he had with his dad, like after all those years of being this, the tension between them. It's like, oh, yeah, all that was completely undone when it's found out. I just thought about that, too. We haven't seen his sister, uh, Sarah, right? To be fair, it's Jordana Spiro, who was in Ozark, because it just kind of flicked it in my head. I was like, all right, yeah, I forgot she was in the show. I mean, she hasn't been around since season two, when her and Reed were kind of dating. Or was that only in season one? I feel like she might have popped up a little bit in season two. Because her and Reed breaking up was in season one, wasn't it? I think it was. I, I don't remember. It's been a while. But it just it just kind of made me think about her, which I with the way Ozark is right now, I kind of feel like she's kind of exited the story potentially. Which hey, that's spoilers. I do apologize. Most likely, nevertheless, I didn't go into specifics, but nevertheless, I'm going off on tangents. But um, it's like yeah, all of it was built on fake lies and deceit. So it's like any good that came from that was built on that. It was nothing but lies and deceit themselves. So. Kurt does not be, like being lied to. To be fair, he's kind of had to handle a lot of lies first about Jane, who she really was, having to deal with that, finding out about his dad. Like, it's a lot, you know, so he doesn't handle well with lies. And now he feels like Jane, the woman he loves, is lying to him. And it's like, okay, she's like, do you want to know the truth? That woman you get, because she goes, okay, I found some um, black market dealer. And I'm like, okay, so you already know he knows about Violet, so you're using that in your cover. So which is like, 
pretty damn smart of you, Rumi. Rumi does not back down. So it's kind of like, she's helping me find a, a potential cure of black market. And it's like, Kurt's like, no, no, no. I'm totally against it normally, but like, I'll do whatever it takes to save you. And I was like, oh, at, immediately in my brain, I was like, oh my God. She's got him by the finger, like, Kurt, because he's so emotional, he can't see this from an outside perspective. What's happening is, I was like, what's going to happen is, he's secretly going to help them break uh, Shepard out. I was thinking, like, Jane was going to manipulate him into thinking, like, oh, we're doing this, this, and that. But in actuality, everything he's doing is actually helping prepare them and give them the resources they need to break Shepard out. I thought, like, oh, he's going to help us. Get this, this and that. Like I thought she was going to manipulate the situation so that he inadvertently helps them to a certain extent. But it turns out that's not the case at all because, well, for two things. One, Jane's got her own plan because apparently Violet kind of had like a crazy plan which apparently involves, you know, things not being quiet. But I guess because of Kurt's, like, because I thought like she was like, oh, because Kurt knows now we don't have to be as quiet because he'll help, you know, inadvertently. But it's like, no, because he knows we got to move up operations, even if it's not quiet like I wanted it before. We can't we gotta go in, you know, fast just because, you know, time is running out even more. But it also turns out whatever her plan is, is going to release a huge panic around city then it turns out kurt put a tracker on jane finds a shell case and like oh runs into violet shootout and it's like violet calls jane what what's going on she's about to leave runs into kurt kurt pulls out the gun i'm like yo hard cut the end i'm like dude best way to end that off on a cliffhanger it's definitely going to be interesting when it comes down because it's like I've got the feeling this is initial thought. I think Jane is going to try and twist this around Kurt because everyone's going to be like, the fact of the matter is Kurt's been a little on edge. He's been paranoid. I'm sure all the stuff that he's done has started accumulating to the point like Jane could twist it for the rest of the team and make it seem like Kurt is going crazy. We need to look out for him. He's just not thinking straight just because of my condition. He's not in the right state of mind. That's where I think she might twist it, but it's like, how are you going to get out of this room? How are you going to lie your way out of this? You up, did it up to this point, but what's going to happen? Is it going? Is the truth going to come out? And he's like, you're not. Is she going to be like, I'm Remy? Like, will she tell the truth? Like, what's going to happen in that? Because no matter what the circumstances are, like, he'll try and capture her, but the fact of the matter is he'll never actually hurt Jane, so she kind of has an upper hand on that front. Like, he'll never shoot her or anything. He might try and bind her and just kind of handcuff her or something like that, but he'd never shoot her if she tried to leave and fought her way out. I don't know. That's initially where my brain goes. Sadly, we will not be finding out next week because apparently there is a break. Obviously, Thanksgiving is next week, so I think that kind of fits in all of that too. So there will be an episode on the Friday after that on uh, November 30th. So keep that in mind. I'm very excited to see what the next episode has in store for us with all of this, especially with a cliffhanger ending like that. Dude, I cannot wait. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.